Alright, hello everybody, welcome back to Sweetycraft. We're on with a new game today, Kerbal's Space Program. It's a fun little game, got it for Christmas about a week ago, and I've been playing it all week long. It's uh, it's pretty fun. So I figured I'd share with you guys and let you have a look, uh, maybe do a nice little let's play. I did set the settings a little bit up. Uh, it starts out at a default of 100% for the science and the funds, and I found that it was very tedious, very grindy, uh, doing all that stuff. So I did speed it up just a little bit. I set it all to 250%, so about twice as fast, a little over twice as fast. So, anyway, here is our space center uh, of... Let me, let me change the audio a little bit here, guys. The uh, Drop down that ambient sound a teensy bit. Music, get rid of that. All right, we'll give it a little bit back. Wow, guess all that bird sound was in the music. All right, anyway, that's better. Uh, yeah, so here is our space center. Uh, we've got our space plane here, which you got to wait till you unlock the space plane stuff. You got mission control, which is really more of a. Oh, the birds are driving me nuts. So I'm gonna change that back to zero. Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, the, the, the chirping is just really bugging me. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, you got the mission control here, which is really more of a... It's more of a, a, a job. Like, uh, you, you get... These companies will hire you to do stuff. Um, and so you can accept these jobs. Right now we have a maximum of two jobs. As you level this place up, you can get more more jobs. Uh, I think the second one gives you seven. That's about as far as I made it the first time I played it. You got the admin building over here which allows you to do different kinds of like fundraising or basically allows you to modify your settings. So uh, like this one. You get uh, less reputation so it takes away 5% of your reputation but it gives you more money in replacement for it. Um, stuff like that. So you can change your settings for the basics, uh, you know, a little more money for a little less uh, reputation or science or research or what have you. It's just kind of lets you change those up a little bit. You get the astronaut complex. You start off with four. You got Jedediah, Bill, Bob, which are, so you got a pilot, engineer, scientist, and another pilot. Um, I don't know the courage and the stupidity levels. I don't know if those actually play parts in anything. From what I could see so far, they didn't seem to. You start off with a max allowed of five, but they're so darn expensive to hire that I haven't hired any yet. All right, uh, next you'll come to the vehicle assembly. We'll get back to this in a minute because uh, we're going to spend a lot more time in here. Uh, the launch pad, uh, this is where you'll actually launch your vehicles. We don't have any out there right now. We haven't designed any yet for this game. So, But you'll go out here and this is where you'll actually launch your rockets from. And this can be upgraded to increase weight capacity, can increase, um, well, weight capacity. All right, coming over here next, you get your research and development. Oops, didn't mean to click that. Research and development. This is where you can actually pick up your different researches. So we start off with the basics, basic fin, basic capsule, basic motor, so on and so forth. Just the bare bones minimum to throw a rocket together. And then as we get more science, uh, we can build different rockets. You'll get upgraded parts such as fuel tanks for uh, fuel fuel engines as opposed to like right now we only have the one solid state engine it's a really small one barely gets up in the atmosphere all right next we got uh, and then you got like science stuff so this is a really good one uh, and the decoupler especially because you can uh, add on the rocket boosters and then decouple them for greater height to drop that weight and engage a second rocket motor and so on uh, but the science is really important part and the communication. So we need the radios to talk back and send our science and the thermometer is the first of the science. And you can get more science unlocked. Uh, a barometer, you get the goo. I think we start out with the goo. The goo is another one. I don't know. It's some kind of mystery goo. But as you change your elevation and stuff, it changes what it does. Anyway, you do the science and it unlocks more research points to unlock more of the research technology. So far the best I've gotten was this right here. I got this level researched on my first play uh, and then I got to a stopping point where I got stuck and I couldn't get any more research and I couldn't get any funding and basically my career ended. So we're coming back to start over. Uh, next we've got the tracking station here and this one it uh, gives you a globe it gives you a little demonstration here, but we won't. You can hit M to come straight to it. So this is Kerbal. This is our planet. 
this is our solar system. Well, this is our local planet. So you got two moons around it, and then you got the solar system, and you got several other planets out here. Uh, so far, I have not made it out of Kerbal. Uh, I made it into orbit of Kerbal, and that was it. I haven't been to any of the moons, none of the other planets, nothing like that. But it lists all your objects that it's tracking over here. So anything that's inside of the gravitational pull is going to fall back to the planet. Everything that you can make it into orbit will keep in orbit until you either slow it down to come back in or destroy it with this button or what have you. Uh, and that's, I'm guessing, is how we'll get to satellites. I haven't unlocked, never made it to the satellite parts yet. Hopefully we'll do that in this Let's Play. But yeah, this is where you can track all your and take control of all your uh, spacecraft that are still in orbit. So we'll get back out of that. All right. And that's pretty much it for everything, uh, with the exception of the one I did skip, the vehicle assembly. And this is the location where we're going to actually build our rockets. And before we do that, I want to come in here to Mission Control. And we're going to grab us a couple of missions here. So let's see. We want to gather science. We can only hold two. So we want to pick two of them. They'll give us funding, and they'll give us research, and they'll give us reputation for completing them. Um, rewards and these are nice these actually don't appear to have any negatives so a lot of them you'll get down later and you'll have like failure if you fail to do it you get negative consequences for it so uh, let's see what do we want we're not gonna be able to make it to orbit oh my goodness gracious dude you are obnoxious let me uh, sorry guys I don't usually have the the voices are I don't know maybe I could just never hear them before I don't know Sounds are bugging me tonight, so we'll come back in. All right, that's a little better. All right, so we're not gonna be able to orbit Kerbal. We don't have. We just started out. We have the basic bare bones rocketry, so that's not going to work. Uh, let's see. Escape the atmosphere. We might be able to make the seventy thousand, but I doubt it. Launch first vehicle. We can definitely do that. And gather scientific data. So we need to transmit or receive experimental data. I'm pretty sure we can handle that. Uh, we'll have the goo. So we'll be putting, we'll put a goo ball on our first rocket, and uh, we'll make sure we put a radio transmitter, and we'll transmit it back if we have. Ooh, actually, we might not have a radio transmitter unlocked. I don't know. We'll take a look. Uh, if we don't, we'll uh, we'll definitely unlock it in time to come. So this just gives you the general intro. Welcome to the rocket building. Okay. And the uh, controls here are kind of weird, uh, up and down and, and left and right. I'll show you. you uh, it, it builds it kind of floating in the air so you can attach parts to the top and bottom. So we'll start out with our crew quarters here. So this is where our uh, our Kerbinaut is going to go. A uh, you can zoom in. If you hold down shift and roll the mouse wheel, it lets you zoom in. You can see our uh, flag right there is on the side. And you can right click the parts to bring up specifics about the part. Uh, and this is more important, especially when you start doing the space planes, because you can go in and change if you know anything about aerodynamics. So I changed my space plane and made it more realistic for the controls. You know, I changed the elevators on the tail to only apply to pitch. I changed the rudder for yaw and the uh, uh, elevators, I'm sorry, the uh, ailerons for roll. So I actually set my plane, my space plane up just like a real airplane. And you can do that too if you so choose, or you can leave it so that it automatically does all of them out of every control. So I don't know. Anyway, back to this. Uh, shift, zoom in and out. Uh, without holding shift, the mouse wheel goes up and down. If you hold down right click, you can drag it around your creations. Okay. So we'll go back up. Uh, it's kind of kind of annoying controls. I won't lie. It takes a little getting used to. Okay. All right. So we got your first part now. You can only attach things to certain parts. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure the toggle snap is on. Okay. Now you can just stick things on anywhere and they'll stay attached, but they won't necessarily work, especially if it's like uh, something that requires a fuel transfer or anything like that, like the fuel rockets. If you don't have the rocket motor snap attached to the fuel tank, then it's not going to get the fuel from the tank. So you want to make sure this toggle snap is on, okay? Other options you have here, you have the uh, symmetry. Um, so the toggle snap, you can quick key that with C. That turns it on and off, so C is in Charlie. The symmetry is X as an x-ray and you can go all the way from 2 all the way to 8 
So the more you click it, the more it does, and it'll default back to just just to one or center or no no symmetry. You also have some other keys over here. Center of mass. It'll show you what the center of mass of your rocket is, which actually is important. This game is physics based, so everything you do or everything you build is actually physics based. When you go to launch a rocket, if you have a really top heavy rocket. Even though you got a bunch of rocket motors on the bottom kicking it up, if it's top heavy, it'll start to tumble, which I found out the hard way many times. You got the center of thrust, so right now we don't have any thrusters on here, but uh, once we get one built, I'll try and remember to show that to you. And it'll just show you if you have thrusters pointing in more than one direction, it'll show you where the center line thrust is going to be. And then aerodynamics, uh, once you start throwing fins or if you build space planes and stuff, this will give you your aerodynamic overview, so it'll tell you how much lift per drag. Uh, you have on your spacecraft. Fuel tanks, uh, so the first one up here, oops, didn't mean to do that. First one up here is modules, so command modules, and you will unlock more of those later, I hope. Uh, next is fuel tanks, once we get the liquid fuel, you can do that. Next we have rocket boosters, so like right now we only have the one. Command modules, uh, the only thing I've seen in here, in fact I don't think I saw anything in there yet. Structural is a different kind of just connectors. It doesn't have any like fuel or anything like that and it just lets you connect one thing to the other. Uh, the only problem with this is the mass. So these things, they let you connect, interconnect things, but they do add weight to your spacecraft. So you gotta be careful on, uh, you can't just throw a bunch of crap on there and expect it to work. Next we got couplers. We don't have any, but these are what lets you detach one part of your spacecraft to another, i.e. if you have a solid rocket fuel booster that you burn up to get your initial lift and then you want to turn in, you know, convert over to your liquid fuel, you would want to have a coupler so that you're, you can detach that solid fuel. You don't want to carry around the weight of that solid fuel engine with you when it has no gas in it. You want to get rid of it. So that's where these couplers come in. There's a couple different kinds. There's a uh, inline that'll just kick it off the back, and then you've got some like side mounting ones. And uh, we'll get to some of those a little later on in the game, hopefully. Uh, payloads. This is uh, what I've seen in that is like scientific equipment, or actually it was a uh, like a, a storage container was what I remember seeing on that. Aerodynamics. You got uh, fins. Once you get the space planes, you'll get wings, tail cones, stuff like that. Uh, I think air or uh, Intake covers are in here as well for the air-fueled engines of the space planes. Ground, you have uh, mounts like uh, a little later on we'll unlock the, the, the mounts that let you attach your spacecraft to the ground. It also has landing gear for your plane. Thermal will have uh, heat shields, so for rocket reentry, this is, like I said, physics based. And this thing falling back to the planet will actually get heat on it, so thermal shielding is a must. Now this thing can, this little pod just like uh, the original spacecraft in, on Earth, this thing can uh, handle quite a bit of heat, uh, but once you get up to several you know, thousand meters per second, it, uh, it can't take it. Electrical, you got batteries, stuff like that. Communication, this is where our radios will go. Obviously we don't have any, so I guess we won't be able to do that uh, communication science one. Uh, we can do the science though, so there's the goo. Uh, we won't throw it on the first one because our first mission, all we got to do is get out of orbit, right? And then uh, down here in utilities, I'm sorry, this is science, so this is where all your science stuff will be. Down here for utilities, this is where you'll have uh, parachutes and crew modules and things like that. So right now we have the Mark 16 parachute. And we're going to attach that peppy. So as you see, when I grab another item, you end up with this little green dot. Let me, uh, let me turn off. There we go, aerodynamics, turn that off, okay? So you can set these things down uh, when it's red, that means it's not attached to the rocket, okay? And then you can, if you see these little green and black dots, these are attach points for your different modules, okay? So we wanna attach our parachute up top here, just like that, all right? And uh, we'll come back, we don't have a lot of parts right now, so let's go back up to our engines. We'll take a solid rocket engine and we're just gonna attach that baby to the bottom. There you go, there's our center line, our thrust, so there's our that's our thrust overlay. And that's what that looks like. It's main thrust down. Uh, if we had some that are sticking off the sides, you would see thrusters going to the side. All right, now before we go out to launch our spaceship here, or well, I wouldn't call this a spaceship, but before we go out to launch this little thing, uh, we wanna look over here, okay? So now over here is your different stages of the rocket, okay? and this is basically the order in which parts of your rocket will be activated, okay? And the stages are activated using the spacebar. 
it starts from the bottom and works its way up. So right now our parachute and our motor are both in stage one or stage zero. The, the first launch is stage zero. That's bad. We don't want to launch our parachute at the same time we launch our motor. This took me quite a while to figure out, let me tell you. Uh, every time I'd launch my rockets, the parachutes would be shooting out the bottom of the airplane, out of the spaceship, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, this is why. It's the stages. So you click the plus. It'll add an extra stage. We want to drag our rockets down here to the bottom, okay? I know it says zero and one. Trust me, it goes from the bottom up. So the bottom is what you want first. Uh, and a good way to work this is if you build your spaceship from the top down, then a lot of this stuff will already be at the bottom. It takes less uh, modification of your stages. Anyway, so there we go. We've got our engine on the bottom, so we'll launch that. That'll get us up into the air quite a bit. And the second, we got our parachute, so once our rocket motor stops, we'll launch our parachute so that the spaceship floats back down to the planet. Okay? So that's our two stages are set up. Last but not least, we want to come up here to this crew button, and we're going to add on our pilot. So we have Jebediah. I personally like Valentina. Just, the name just sounds cool. Uh, anyway, you can save your spaceship's design. So you can click up here, and you can name it. You can even add descriptions and stuff. We're just going to leave untitled for now. This is just to uh, accomplish that first mission and get us a little bit of cash and a little bit of science. But you can come up here and save, and then uh, you can open up, and you'll have you can have. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because it'll get rid of this. But you can have a bunch of blueprints. Every time you save it, it'll save your blueprints into a file. Uh, over here, you can start a new one, so that'll clear off everything on your drawing board here, and you can build a whole new rocket. This will take you back to the space center, and this one is what we're going to use. Will take us to the launch pad. Uh, take a couple seconds to load. Usually, it's pretty fast. All right, there we go. So our launch pad, as you can see, is just a pile of dirt. Uh, it's pretty pretty low tech, pretty lame, okay? And you can see the space shuttle is just sitting here. Now once you come out, the controls change a little bit. Uh, zooming in and out now is just the mouse wheel, no shift required, but you still gotta drag the right mouse button around to, uh, to change your view, okay? Alright, now as I said, your stages are controlled by spacebar, okay? So spacebar will ignite and then when I click spacebar again, that'll pop out the parachute. All right, controls. Controls for your aircraft are done with, or your spacecraft here, I'm sorry, are done with the standard uh, ASDW. So A and D is your yaw. S and D is your pitch. I'm sorry, S and W is your pitch. And then Q and E gives you your roll, okay? Just like a lot of standard uh, games of this type. Um, down here, this is your your gimbal or your artificial horizon, and uh, what this does is this allows you to control your aircraft. Right now, it's aligned with this dot is what uh, where your aircraft is pointing. Okay, so right now it's pointing straight up, as you can see. Okay, and then as you control it, once you launch, you can control it and angle it up and down, left and right, and then rotate as necessary. The top half is blue for the sky, the bottom half is brown for the Earth. Even though once you're in space, it really doesn't apply, it still works out to the same way. And as I said, this will become a little bit more important. Right now, it's not a big deal. A little bit later, when we're trying to get into orbit, it's important because you've got to get a you need to align for the proper tra trajectory to get yourself into a stabilized orbit. But for now, we're just going to launch our first uh, first little space shuttle here. Are you guys ready? Uh, my son loves to do a countdown when, we, when he watches me play this, but uh, we'll go ahead and just launch. So, space bar. Up, up, and away. And you can see over here is your fuel, how fast your fuel is burning. And you can also see that the parachute, you right-click these, it'll bring it up. See, uh, when it's red, it's not safe, and you can see that right here, too. This will keep it docked, so even if you click out, it'll stay on there. And it'll this will change as it's safe. So right now, we're too fast to launch our parachute. There you go. Now we've slowed down enough, it's safe to launch that parachute. I'm going to wait till we hit the top of our arc, just because I don't want to put a bunch of drag on the spaceship. I want to get as high as we possibly can, just to unlock, you know, the stuff. Uh, one thing we can do here is we can we can right click on this, and bring up the crew, and we can get her to do a uh, where's it at where's it at crew report right here crew report. Now if we had an antenna we could transmit that we don't so we'll just keep the experiment, and that hopefully will get us a little bit of science. All right, you can see the rocket starting to fall now. We're going to deploy our chute. That baby's going to pop out right there, and now you can see here the altitude. This is where you set the pressure or set the altitude for the parachute to actually fully deflate. Until then, it just pops out. 
Now it will still slow the aircraft aircraft slightly uh, in this configuration, but it won't actually slow it fully until it fully deploys. And you can set this altitude to whatever you want. And this is, from what I can tell, is uh, is altitude above the planet, so MSL or mean sea level, uh, not altitude above the the ground. Because if you do this over the mountain and you have a thousand feet, and the mountain's a thousand feet, you're going to crash in the mountain. I found out that hard way. I'll show you. We're going to pop this up to 5,000 feet. That's the maximum you can do. And you'll see here, this is our altitude. So we're falling down. And when it hits 5,000 feet, it should automatically open up all the way. There you go. It's popping open. And we are on our way down. All right, so what I'm doing right here is warping physics. We're going to speed up time to make this thing fall down faster. Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. You can come up here to the top, and you can actually click the times that you want to speed it up. And as you get in the space, you can actually do like 10,000 times or something like that. It, it, the whole arrow thing goes huge. Um, so you can come up here and click with your mouse. There's also command keys. So if you go down to your keyboard, just to the right of the M, you've got the comma and period. Uh, also by pushing those, or I'm sorry, comma period and the uh, uh, forward slash. So comma and period will go up and down with the time warp. Forward slash resets it to time one. Okay, so I'm speeding it up to times four here. And then uh, we'll come back after it splashes down. All right, we're about to splash down. I'm slowing it down, and there you go. Splash down, we are in the water. Now to retrieve our crew, we're going to come up here and recover the vessel. And that's going to have our space station is going to go pick up the parts, and then we'll get a post-mission debriefing. Here we go. So we've got crew report while flying over Kerbal. Gave us five with a data value of 1.75. We get eight science out of that. The recovery of the vessel itself was a data gathering of one with a data value of 1.5. Gives us 12 and a half science. There you go. It jumps up 21.3 science to the science we've already got. Uh, actually, it gives us plus 21.3, and as I said, we uh, we gave it about a two and a half, two and a half boost, so now we're getting 48 out of that. So that's good. Next, parts. So these are all the parts of the command of the uh, spaceship it was able to recover. So you got the actual pod parts itself. Sorry, I can't talk tonight. The actual parts itself are collected here, and this is the value that we got back for them. And then down here is the fuel that was left over. So there is, uh, I guess, 0.59 solid fuel left in the motor, and 1.17 monopropellant, which is what I think is used for the RCS systems or uh, control systems in space. And so that never gets used. I actually should have taken that out, and that's in the module itself. You could you can leave that uh, when you're building the space shuttles you right click on it you can adjust the fuel and stuff that your different motors and stuff take with them um, so we could have lowered that and that would actually lower the cost of our of our shuttle all right and that gave us a thousand uh, a thousand funds from the recovery parts so we get 26 268,000 now and that's not all just from recovery that's also from the mission we did also Valentina gained one experience point for that mission uh, and as they upgrade they actually learn new skills and stuff which is really cool and we got a total reputation of 54 all right so we're gonna come down here to the right you see this little uh, Wi-Fi kind of looking symbol you right click that I'm sorry, just to highlight that, and it's going to bring up this menu. And these are all the different accomplishments that just happened. So we'll click on one of those. So right here, contract complete. So we gathered scientific data from Kerbin. So that was one of our contracts. And we that gave us 10 grand, 2 science, and 5 uh, reputation. And then you can go ahead and delete that message saying that you got it, okay? Uh, so we got our scientific data gathered. So we that was just a regular goal that we accomplished. And this was the benefits of doing that goal. You can get rid of that. We launched our first vessel, that was another contract, so we finished that, and these are the benefits. Get rid of that. Uh, launched our first, but this is the same thing, I don't know why it's telling us twice. And then we just got a whole bunch of first time milestones. So we did something for the first time in the game, and you get bonuses for doing that. So the first time we broke 25 meters per second, we get this cash value research, and so on. And you can read through these as you're playing, you can see we did a whole bunch of stuff. 
uh, travel distances. You get them. You get them for distances. You get them for uh, speeds. You get them for doing like orbits, first flights. Uh, I don't even know all, and then recovering of our crew. So these are all the world's first. Now, if you don't delete this and you just cancel it, they're just going to stay down here. And you can come back and relook them at it if you want, uh, but it's kind of tedious. So uh, every time you get something new, it's going to add on to here, and it just gets to be a huge list. So I highly recommend just delete it, get rid of it, uh, save yourself a whole lot of heartache. All right. So now we've got 48 research available. Uh, they boosted up our our uh, reputation a bit, and now we've got quite a bit of cash as well, which means we can build a more advanced rocket. We can also do some upgrades, okay? We did our first mission, and I'm gonna leave it at that. That's gonna be a, a great first, uh, first play. And uh, next time we come back, we'll buy some research, we'll do some upgrades of some of our space station here, and we'll cover kinda some of that stuff. Anyway, until then, guys, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope to see you again on the next episode of Kerbal Space Program. Until then, have a great day.